Have you ever noticed how the Microsoft logo is surprisingly similar to the Greg's logo? Maybe they're secretly working together to put the Microsoft version of Elon Musk's Neuralink chips into people's bodies, but instead of a brain surgery, they insert it via a warm sausage roll. In this video, we will be redesigning, overhauling, and completely rethinking the Microsoft logo. Now before we start building out new ideas, it's a good idea to see what's been done before to get a clear understanding of the brand's progression and history. Strap in because this is a wild ride. Prior to 1975, it was this Traff O Data logo that looks like a cave painting. 1975 Microsoft couldn't be more 70s unless it was wearing flared trousers and a shirt with only the 4 of the 10 buttons done up. The logo from 1980 wouldn't look out of place on a metal festival lineup poster. In 1982, we have this juicy geometric star with the O being the standout feature. I'm just not quite sure what this is supposed to resemble, but there's no denying this logo suits the software company better than the previous attempts. 1987 moved to this naughty little number with its bold italic typeface and little cut between the O and S. Very sharp, very clean. In 2012, the Microsoft logo introduced the Windows icon, which is interesting as up until this point, Windows had been visually separated. The colors here have meaning. Red is Microsoft Office, green represents Xbox, blue represents Windows software, and then the yellow is apparently for Bing, but this is weird because I've never actually associated Bing with yellow. This logo has been in use for 12 years now, and I have to say it does look timeless. The simple shapes and bold colors have become ingrained in society, making it one of the most recognizable global brands out there. So with a brand as distinctive as this, I go into this project realizing that almost anything I create is going to be superfluous, su superfluous, superfluous. I, I wrote this script and I can't even read it. Super, super unnecessary to their needs. Knowing this leads my brain to search for and consider possible direction changes in the company itself, which could be the catalyst for a rebrand. As part of the research, I looked at the recent timeline of Microsoft's achievements. In here, I noticed a very diverse and inclusive, human-centric narrative that is clearly trying to give a personal touch and not feel like a soulless corporation. Could this become the basis for one of the logo refreshes? Obviously, being a software company, the main focus is on technology and continuous advancements. Obviously, with the four sections being so predominant in the current logo, I was starting to think about how we could split any graphic device into four pieces. Then with the advancement of AI, I was also not shying away from adding more elements where necessary. My plan was to just get something that looks nice, then justify the colouring and element count later. So this is my final page of sketches, and now let's move into Adobe Illustrator and refine the strongest of these concepts into something bea beautiful. Right then, to kick us off, I worked up an icon that was reminiscent of the old Windows 95 logo, with a cheeky modern twist. When sketching, I kept going back to taking the windows and somehow adding another dimension to them, or at least the illusion of 3D. So once this was blocked out as solid squares, the little devil on my shoulder just said, I know windows are normally square, but what's the worst that could happen if you round them corners? Now, I interrupt this video with a little trick for connecting corners of two rounded objects like this. If you go to Object, Path, Add Anchor Points, it adds a new point at the center of the corner, making it easy to delete the points you don't need, then use Command and J to join. Smooth, lovely corners every time. So this icon is basic form, but with a little 3D pop. To match the character of the logo, I paired the icon up with the word mark set in Basic Sans. The idea for option two was simple, create an all-in-one logo block that combines icon with word mark. Built with the grid, this was a fairly easy setup and exploring colors was interesting, but ultimately the addition of gradients felt unnecessary and weakened the overall impact of the logo. That devil on my shoulder that tells me to round the corners did come in for a few minutes, but I went against it this time and created one final version that went all in on a solid hard logo. The typeface used here is called Lose. This adds a little personality without being too over the top and contemporary. The idea for option 3 was a bit more of a radical shift from anything before. The plan was to create a hard window-esque shape and then duplicate this into a circle to imply progress and innovation. A stroked shape worked for 300 of the 360 degrees of a circle, but the final overlap wasn't looking like the others. So I had to expand this and then duplicate the overlapping shape, bring it to the front and then use a clipping mask to hide the area that I didn't want to see. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice we've got more than four windows. We actually have 10, and 10 isn't divisible by four. So what on earth is the plan here? Well, the plan is we introduce purple. 
Microsoft Teams is purple. We could even at a stretch say that purple is the new color for AI tech or something like that. Like a true designer, I put form first and then filled in the blanks later, and I think it works. In a moment of madness and tried a wildcard font and logo position, but it looked more like some sort of party planning company than a tech software giant. The font that I think did match nicely was called Filson Pro. I tried a few different thicknesses and I guess you'll just have to watch till the end of the video to see which one made it through the auditions. Another idea that moved away from the simple four panels of glass. The idea here was to build out an eye-pleasing square that split into four pieces in an irregular but visually equal way. Using the pen tool and a square, I drew and then tinkered with these shapes until they worked nicely not only on a square, but also on a square with rounded corners. All that devil was back. I didn't like the kink in the bottom left once I worked this up a little further, so I had to go back, move the lines and then redo the process a few times until I got it looking nice and smooth. Now in terms of the final icon, I'm having trouble giving it real meaning. On one hand it works because it contains the four colours and is a fairly visually pleasing way of showing the four conflicting colours, but it also does look like a logo for a kite or parachute shop. I was having trouble matching the font size with the icon size, which is why you'll see I turned everything black and white during the process. This makes it easier to see the correct visual balance. The font used in this one was Proxima Nova, very versatile font. I like it a lot. Option 5. The idea for option 5 was to take the four panels of glass from the original windows and stack them up on top of each other. I used the classic 3D features to give myself an isometric top view which was my base to work on. I developed quite a few different versions but nothing was sticking just right. For some reason I kept feeling like the stack logo is something that I've seen overused even though I can't remember where. The idea of putting a coloured window on top of the stack wasn't particularly good but it did pave the way for the next idea that I'll show you in a minute. Amidst this chaos, I had a sudden realisation that I hadn't incorporated the cut O and S from the Microsoft logo in 1987. So now in my panic to produce something out of the ordinary, I did something I wouldn't recommend doing. I simplified and complicated things all at the same time. My four windows turned into 16 windows. Then the transparency changed to give a sort of implication of moving or floating. This would be an absolute nightmare to implement in the real world on anything physical, but there's something about it I like. It feels light, nimble and airy. Just before I show you the final design options, can I just ask that you help boost this video up the rankings by slapping that like button and then get down in them comments below and tell me your favourite and worst option please. Okay then Rebrand Gang, let's see them final options.